Muslims don't disbelieve in Christ. We just don't mm. believe Christ is, is Lord and Savior. I was going to lie. Wallahi. I was thinking about that today as I was eating my breakfast. Like, you know what? Like, I, I believe, I believe in the three. You know, not the way that, you know, Christians believe, but I believe in, you know, I believe in God. I believe in Allah. I believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the angel Jibreel. May Allah be pleased with him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the channel. Let's get back into it. What's something that you know that you wish the whole world knew? I'll go first. I know that God is one and he has no son. He is not born of anything, nor did he give birth to anything. And there is nothing comparable to him. This is also a verse, in, or this is a, a chapter in the Quran, and it goes like this: Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Kuhu Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulid, wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Muslim, and I believe God is one. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> simple, bro. Simple. Alhamdulillah. Why do people complicate that? Alhamdulillah. Those innocent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, God, I've seen God this is one. We believe God is one, but like, it's like three parts. You know, it's it's not like one plus one plus one, because that would yeah. be three. It's more like one times one times one equals three. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, we believe in Christ. Like, and Bro, we believe in Christ too. <laughs> Muslims don't disbelieve in Christ. We just don't mm. believe Christ is, is Lord and Savior. I would well, lie. Wallahi, I was thinking about that today as I was eating my breakfast. Like, you know what? Like, I, I believe, I believe in the three. You know, not the way that, you know, Christians believe, but I believe in, you know, I believe in God. I believe in Allah. I believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the angel Jibreel. May Allah be pleased with him. So it's like, we believe in that, it's just... It's not the same. Isn't that crazy, bro? Hmm. Do I got food in my mouth? How could, how could something be just, just that mistranslated, bro? To two billion people worldwide. This is what happens when you don't have the uh, authentication process. Mm. What do you mean by that, bro? Come on, bro. You want me to explain this? Yes, sir. You have two Muslims, two born Muslims on this video right now. And you want a revert to explain this? Yes, sir. We got we had a revert just recite Surah Ikhlas, bro. What's your point? Yeah. All right. So the authentication process, bro. I'm going to refer to the Hadiths. In the Hadiths, there is a chain of narrations, and they go through this authentication process. Please correct me if I'm wrong here, because my memory is not the best today. But in this authentication process, it goes down this chain of narration, and... They're basically seeing, like, is this person trustworthy? Does this person have the best memory? Not my kind of memory. I, are, are they, um, I don't know, Rami, come in for the save, bro. <laughs> so there is many things that go into it. They have to see, yes, if the person has good memory, uh, but also if they're reliable, if they have been caught lying before, if they've been caught stealing, if they have been caught uh, doing anything that uh, is impermissible publicly, and uh, or even privately, if they think they're in private for that matter, uh, anything in that case, they would also have to consider if this person has their books or not. So for someone to be a narrator of a hadith or a collector of hadith, they need to have their books. And there was one uh, one scholar, his Ma'mar ibn, I forget, I forget what it was, but his, his first name is Ma'mar. He traveled from his hometown. He had all his books there. He left his hometown right to travel. He didn't bring his books. So he went from being a trustworthy, reliable narrator to being a weak narr narrator just because he didn't have his books. So there's mm -hmm. a very rigorous, specific science mm -hmm. behind authenticating if narrators are valid or not. And you actually had scholars follow other scholars because they had the job of seeing if they were reliable. And for example, he had a, a scholar who was following Imam al-Bukhari, and the man that was following Imam al-Bukhari he wanted to get his, his camel or his donkey or something to move. So he took a carrot and he waved it in front of the animal to get it to move. 
And then at the end, after getting it to move, he put the, the carrot like in his bag. He didn't feed the animal. So Imam Bukhari ran away. He left the guy. He's like, I'm not going to sit here and be judged by someone who's willing to deceive a creation of Allah like that. Because how do I know he's not willing to deceive me or anyone else when he writes about me? That's how very specific and rigorous they were in saying, you know, whether, whether they were trustworthy or not. Sheikh Gabriel is, was telling us uh, about the fitness aspect too. Like there's physical requirements. You know what I mean? It's my first I'm just saying that like, this mm-hmm. is a simplification. Mm-hmm. What we're saying here is a simplification of the prophet, the process. Yeah. And like for those watching who, who are asking, oh, well, okay, that's, that's that. Well, then does the Bible not have this? The Bible doesn't have it. Mm-hmm. The Bible doesn't have it. It's just a collection of narrations like the hadiths. But there's no authentication process. So you don't know what's authentic and what's not. I agree. And this ain't the West where there's false assault charges and people are doing time for 20, 30 years. No. We believe in, in truth and honesty from the get-go. Right? Yeah, this doesn't always happen, but Muslims don't represent Islam. And Islam fundamentally stands for honesty, justice, and, and transparency from the get-go. Ram, you look like there's something on your mind, bro. I'm so wondering. Oh, what can I do? 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 What yeah, bro, I'm happy, mashallah. It's a beautiful thing, bro. I, I would never, never be upset about that. Alhamdulillah, bro. Did you have something to say, though? I was going to ask what Fahid uh, meant when Why he said the it? fitness aspects. Oh, like, mm. there's, like, like when you, uh, there was a lot of, uh, like, for example, you had to be in physical, there was like a physical requirement. Like, you can't be out of shape, I believe. This was what Gabriel was saying. Like, there's a physical standard. I don't think it's like you had to look like a like a like a like you were you cut up or anything, but there was a requirement there because he was saying that I believe this is what he was saying that how you are physically it also reflects on how you are mentally. Oh, that's, that's true. Subhanallah, that's, it's my first time hearing that. Mashallah, that's, that's really my cool. first time as well. Bro. And I he was, was about saying, to cut you off and be like, "Allahumma atna fit dunya." Ashhadu an la. We got a patreon if you guys don't know what patreon is it's a site where we post exclusive content that never airs on youtube and we also post content early that does air on youtube if you like the content that we're putting out here you want that more in-depth content more personal more real stuff that we can't put on youtube then go ahead and head over to our patreon it's pretty much free if you think about it, it the lowest tier is five dollars Break that up between, what, 30 days? How much is that? 16 cents a day. That's 16 cents a day. Guys, come on. We're not trying to gain anything really from this. It goes to the Masjid Fund. We also give to Sadaqah. We give to charity. And if we truly need a little bit for our bills or just something for our means for food or something along those lines, that's where we might use it. But for the most part, like this is... This is all for the sake of Allah here. So whatever you pay, Allah is going to give you back. And then so. We've been making free content. And it does take a lot of work. Like people don't realize how, how much work it takes to sometimes do daily uploads. A new video every day. It does take a lot of work. So essentially you guys do help support the channel. Help keep us going. Help us propagating the deen of Allah. When we record Patreon videos. Like Patreon videos are when the, the realists of the real in us come out. Because we're not thinking about like, oh, this can go on YouTube. I can say this word. I can't say that word. We are as clear cut, as specific, as unfiltered as we need to be, you know, as Muslims as we should be, alhamdulillah, very straight to the point. And you'll see like videos with, with me and, and Fahd and Anhil, they're just so real on Patreon. And I think that's what the Muslim Ummah needs. And if you need, you know, real brothers that are willing to have real conversations with you, hit that Patreon up. Because if you guys think that our channel is real, 
and you're talking about YouTube, then just imagine what Patreon could do for you, inshallah. Consider becoming a member. Link in the description. Take your life to the next level, inshallah. And we'll see you on the other side. Mm -hmm.